There's a lot of things that make Montana great, from the mountains and lakes to some of the finest towns in the West. But what really makes this place special is you. Our communities are full of people who are working hard to build good lives and remarkable things. At Opportunity Bank, our passion is helping folks do just that. Together, we can make a good thing even better. Opportunity Bank of Montana. Stop by and see us or visit us online. Member FDIC. Join Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any Town Pump across Montana. Plus, earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com slash rewards to register and start saving. Have you or a loved one been charged or accused of a crime? If so, the stress can leave anyone feeling helpless and alone. But you don't have to be alone. Hi, I'm Dave Maldonado, and I've successfully defended Montanans for over a decade in these situations. So if you're tired of being scared, let's get you prepared. To see how, visit BigSkyDefender.com today. You are not alone. Visit BigSkyDefender.com to find out more on how you can fight back against local and federal criminal charges. Saturday against Delaware. Uh, in the second round of the FCS playoffs. Um, we've got Coach Houck here and the uh, Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year, Alex Gubner. Um, Coach, we'll just start with your, your thoughts after, first of all, a, a, a big win over Montana State, and then how does your team use the bye week to prepare for uh, the playoffs? Thanks, Eric. We'll get going with that. Uh, first, it was terrific to have last week off. Uh, we could enjoy the 74th victory in the rivalry game, and we got some good football work in. The guys got a couple of days off to freshen up and had a chance to watch a ton of football, and it was just kind of a really nice week to to enjoy the, that win and, and kind of get re-centered and get ready for the playoffs. So with that, we're into the we're into the our first week of the playoffs. We got to watch Delaware play last week. Uh, they've got a terrific football team. They were rolling, I think ranked number five in the country. Um, I think it was ninth week, eighth and ninth week of the season, right in there. Maybe both those weeks they were number five in the nation. So they've spent a good part of the season ranked in the top ten, and they just have a really nice football team. They're, they're big and strong, they're physical. Um, they play hard. They're well coached. They're structured, offense, defense, kicking. They uh, – they just they do a nice job. You can tell that they know what they're doing, and uh, there's a reason why they're they are where they are, and that's why they're in the playoffs. They've earned it, and, and uh, really good team. So, offensively, <clears throat> we don't know for sure which quarterback we're going to play against, uh, but I think it starts up front for them. They're big and strong up front. Those guys play with a lot of attitude. Uh, they're balanced. You know, the offense is kind of. They're really highly ranked on the offensive side of the ball. They, they're uh, 400 and something yards, top 20 offense in the nation, 32 points a game. I mean, they just they put up yards, points, and bundles. Um, the running back yarns is is a go-to guy. I think he's almost seven yards a carry, something like that. Um, Towns in the wide receiver, number 17, is a great receiver. So they've got weapons. They're good up front. Tight end's a great player. I, I really kind of admire him. I think he does a lot of things. I think he, he uh, to a degree, makes them go, both run and pass game. So they're tough to stop. And then defense, um, they're pretty multiple. We really expect them to pressure us and, and come after us, uh, both run and pass downs. So, again, it, it, it's redundant, but they're big and strong up front. They're multiple. And, and uh, you know it'll it'll be uh, this will be a tough game plan. They they do a lot of good things. For the folks watching at home, we have Clifton McDowell, the Big Sky newcomer of the year, joining us as well. It's okay. Coach, speaking of number seventeen, um, you stuck it at me on the in re return game. I was wondering if anybody has that dynamic of a kick return game that you've seen this year besides yourselves. <laughs> 
Um, well, you know, we've seen some good returners, Fritz, but, uh, you know, they have a couple of guys. You know, number five for them was a, like all Big 12 kick returner at Kansas State as well. So they've got a couple of guys. So when you look at, uh, you know, the, the, the number of guys that they can roll in back there that have a lot of juice, this is a pretty dynamic return game, yeah. Bobby, I wanted to ask you just about Alex winning defensive player of the year. First of all, what's that conversation like when you're lobbying for him uh, with the coaches? How do you get their vote? You know, it's not really my way to lobby much. I think that the guys, I mean, the coaches in this league play against uh, each other, and they know week in, week out. I mean, there's nobody that's, that's a, a great player that's a mystery. Um, but like I, I said, you know, he, he made a total of one tackle in uh, last week's game, and affected the whole game. So that I think that's why everybody voted for him, and uh, deservedly so. I mean, you've been saying it all year, that, that he is one of the things that makes your defense go. So, I mean, it must have made you proud and happy that, that he got that award. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for all our guys when they, they get some recognition. And, and, you know, for Alex to be able to, to get named the uh, conference player of the year playing the nose position is, uh, is pretty cool. It just shows what a dominant year he's had. Alex, your reaction when you learned you, you won the award? Um, it's, you know, it's great to win that award. Um, when you look at the list of guys from here that have won it, it's pretty cool. Um, I got to play with Dante Olson who won it. And he was a great player, a very productive player. Um, but at the end of the day, we're trying to play one week at a time and make a run here. And, you know, I think uh, winning that Big Sky Championship meant way more. Um, you know, you could really give this award that I got to uh, really a lot of guys in our defense, you know, because if guys aren't doing their job, I'm not going to make plays. If I'm not doing my job, they're not going to make plays. I mean, there's a lot of guys I think that could have got this award, so. Hey, Bobby, you said you watched a lot of football. I'm sure you watched the Lafayette-Delaware <laughs> game. What did you think of it? I mean, it was, it was a crazy back-and-forth game. It was a crazy back-and-forth game. You know, we – we had watched both teams on film last week to get a jump on it, and, and you know we thought Delaware was uh, the better football team, and so it's kind of shocking the way the game started. But it just goes to show you when you you turn the ball over and and uh, do those sort of things, in particular in your own end, you can get behind get behind fast. So I think it shows what a quality team Delaware is. They're able to overcome that and get the win. When it comes to the multiple quarterbacks, I know you, I know you don't not certain about the health of, of the guys that are ahead of the freshman kid, but how do you go about preparing for that? How is it challenging when you have multiple guys that could play quarterback? Well, we'll watch the film and and we'll see, you know, as we evolve through the week, we'll see what they tend to lean on uh, based on who's in the game, and then uh, you know we just kind of go from there. I mean, we had to do our best unless they call us and tell us what they're doing. That'd be great. Coach, what's it like when you're been preparing against common opponents for so long, and now you're stepping out to one that is unfamiliar, and they don't have any common opponents to you. Like, what what is that like in preparing for an opponent like that? Um, well, you know, I think it's more that you don't have a feel for the league. You know, in our league, we've got so many teams. We go a couple years without playing people, and then in this day and age, uh, with the transfer portal and people hopping in and out of programs, there's not a lot of continuity year to year terms of personnel um, scheme is scheme we watch the film but it, it's more about getting a gauge on where the league is and that's kind of hard to do and we haven't talked to you since so what was your maybe reaction to how the the bracket unfolded and, and where you guys landed and then overall just your thoughts on you know at the FCS level and being able to have kind of a, a playoff format like this well I, I think it's fun uh, I mean it's, it's fun to be involved in it I think that uh, you know we're, we're seated number two is probably deserved. We're excited to be there. Beyond that, you know, we're kind of locked in on who we're playing. As as Alex said, we, we you know, big picture stuff and talking about it. That's for, that's kind of for you guys. We you know, we we'll lock in on this Saturday's game. Alex, what was it like just being able to spend a you know day or two, or however long you did, kind of enjoying that? Big Sky Championship, like especially just you know with the teammates and, and coaches. Um, it was great um, winning that game. Uh, just 
proud to be part of this team and be part of a group of guys that really, you know, focused and hunkered down and went to work and went in out went out and executed. And, uh, so yeah, the, the locker room was pretty fun afterwards. We all got to celebrate together. Um, yeah, I mean, just was a great, you know, great few days. And But now we're back to work, so. Cliff, you got to experience the, you know, the battle of the brawl. Uh, what, what was it like uh, after – you know, playing it, how would you just describe, you know, what that, that game was like? Uh, it was a fun environment, just all the uh, crowd being there, just getting the win for the seniors. So now we just uh, keep going, want to know every week. How would you describe uh, how you guys used uh, the bye week and then kind of what's the excitement level against uh, going against the opponent that you uh, aren't familiar with this weekend? Well, we used the bye week just preparing for, well, Delaware because we watched the game over the bye week. So just preparing, getting ready for them. Cliff, kind of a similar question for you as to Alex. Just obviously you won Newcomer of the Year, and a lot of offensive guys got recognition as well. Just what was it like, one, getting that award and seeing your work pay off and also seeing a lot of other guys on the team be recognized as well? Well, uh, I'm very grateful for the award, and it's glad to see some of my uh, teammates getting recognition too as well. So just very grateful. You've been talking about the O-line all year long. I think there was like four or five guys who got recognized too from this team. Just, you know, how cool was that, just seeing those guys kind of see their work paid off because a lot of people miss what they do too. Well, well deserved for uh, my guys on the O-line. Alex, you've seen just playoff runs where obviously you guys played in the first round last year where you've had the bye before. So just how nice was it kind of having that again and how have you utilized that in the past going into the second round of the playoffs? Um, earning the bye is a, it's a good deal. You get to recharge. Um, you know, we play very physical games. So, you know, we didn't have it last year, but past years we have. I mean, it's uh, – I don't – you know, I don't really sway either way. I mean, last year we got to keep playing football. That's fun. Um, I think when we have the bye now, it's just getting locked in again. You know, we had a few days off, so just getting refocused. Bobby, when it comes to coaching a playoff game as opposed to a regular season game, is there any sort of difference when it comes to coaching? Are there nerves and emotions that have to be managed a little tighter because the season's on the line? Um, no, I don't think so. I think you approach it the same way. You know, it's, you know, Going back to a couple of the other questions, I mean, we, we lost our first conference game, so we've kind of been in that mode since September where if we want to win the Big Sky Championship, we had to win, um, which, you know, we were able to do. And, uh, yeah, I, I think the playoffs are exciting because, you know, if you don't win, the season's over and crazy things happen in the playoffs, but it's, it's, it's enjoyable. Cliff, I know when you started college at the FBS level, you guys are kind of chasing a bowl game. But now that you've been here at the FCS and have a chance at a 2014 playoff, get a go for a national championship, what do you think about having that prospect? Well, it's a surreal feeling. I mean, coming from the FBS, we really didn't have the – well, Lafayette, we really didn't have the, I guess, platform to go into the playoffs. So just being in the playoffs here is just a real blessing. Up on that same note, you guys have been in the playoffs every year since you've been here. What have, what have you thought about having that chance to chase a national championship every uh, year? Like I said earlier, I mean, it's one week at a time, and Co Coach Houck has preached this to us. You know, we got, I think, you know, 16 teams, and everyone's good. If you don't show up and execute and play well, you're going to lose. So, really, just one week at a time and going and executing and, you know, winning that week. And Bobby, I know there's some news this morning about Delaware is going to be leaving for the FBS. I know there's been a handful of teams who've gone up since you've gotten into coaching. Does the national championship at the SCS level, does it still have a high value to you? Is it something that still excites you chasing that every year? Yes, it does. Can you expand that line? Because it's a national championship. I don't, pretty self-explanatory in my mind. Uh, Bobby, defensively for Delaware, uh, number zero, he seems like kind of the, the go-to guy, move him around a lot. Can you just talk about him and what he means to their defensive front? Yeah, I think, like I said a bit ago, I think their front's big and physical. I think they kind of, um, and again, it's Monday at noon. I haven't, I haven't watched every one of their games, but I've watched a lot of it. And 
they really control the line of scrimmage fairly well, uh, week in and week out. I think they're playing against teams that have pretty good offensive lines, and, and they've uh, they've won the line of scrimmage a lot. And so he's a good player, uh, but his his uh, mates up there do a nice job too. You played CAA teams in the past. Is there any defining like identities of those teams, or do they look similar? Does this does this Delaware team look like CAA teams? Well, the last team we played was Madison a couple of years right. ago, and they're they're pretty good. They're pretty good. So, I don't know. That's the league, or was it? They're out of it now, but that's that was the league. So. Coach, when it comes to like evaluating the player personnel on the film, like obviously you can tell the scheme. Is that is there any more of a challenge when it comes to looking at a different league? When it comes to that. Are there times where, like, a school you're not familiar with, they come no, with wide receivers it's, it's stronger no, in person? It's or no, it's no different than watching. You know, now nah, it's it's the same as during the season. It's, it's uh, coach, uh, going back to the all Big Sky teams, one of the guys that was honored was my guy from Eureka, Gary Graves. Can you just talk about? I have to get a little bit of a reduced role on the defense. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But just talk about his role, if you could. Yeah, he, he Garrett played about the same as he has uh, the last few years and did a nice job. And then, you know, he just found uh, a lot of different places to contribute. And, you know, one of those places was a kicking game. And it was exciting to me that he was a, a first-team all-conference player and as a special teams player. So. Good, good for him, and I think it just shows what kind of guy he is. He, he, he'll do whatever it takes to try to help us win. Alex, you guys have obviously had a lot of night games this year. So, what have you done to like kind of perfect the biding the time all day? And, and is it how exciting is it playing a night game in Washington Grizzly Stadium? Um, it's electric. I mean, we got the best fans, and it's loud and rocking. Um, I don't really mind night games. I mean, I get to sleep in and just relax and, you know, watch some football for once, other schools. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just kick back and relax, and that's it. Bobby, were you at Northern Arizona in 1993, or were you still at UCLA? I think I was at NAU. Yeah, I, I just wondered because the last time Delaware and Montana, the only time they ever played was was '93, and I remember talking to a bunch of those guys from that era. They said that was kind of like a launch point for Grizz football, losing that game because then they went on to the semis the next year, the national championship the year after that. So, um, do you have any thoughts or memories of, of that game? Did you follow it 30 years ago? Uh, I don't recall it at all. I mean, I think it was the wing T and all that still in those days at Delaware, um, but. You know, Brent P's coaching that. You might have to nab him. At Blackfoot Communications, our mission is to connect people, businesses, and communities, bringing a world-class fiber network to homes, communities, and businesses of all sizes, ensures Montanans have access to fast, reliable, and secure internet and phone services. Are you ready for fiber internet? To find out if fiber is coming to your area, visit goblackfoot.com slash ready for fiber. Connect to more with Blackfoot Communications. Do you have a DUI or misdemeanor conviction? If so, don't let your past hold you back. Hi, I'm attorney Dave Maldonado, and you may be eligible to have your record cleared today. Visit bigskydefender.com to see how.